It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley are here. They've got the Surface Pro, and they're going to give you their review next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 298, recorded February 7th, 2013. Snowpocalypse. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Podio from Citrix. Manage your projects with files, instant communication, and collaboration all in one workspace. Start using Podio today. It's free. Just visit Podio.com to sign up, set up your first workspace, and invite your team to get started. Work the way you want to with Podio.com. And by ShareFile. Enhance your workflow. Send files of almost any size easily and securely with ShareFile from Citrix. Try ShareFile today. For a 30-day free trial, visit ShareFile.com. Click the radio microphone and enter Windows. And by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to Audible.com slash Windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show that covers the latest news from Windows, and there is news. It's been a very exciting time for Windows. And here to tell you all about it, it's Paul Therott, <laughs> editor-in-chief of the Supersite for Windows at winsupersite.com, analyst for Penton Media, author of fine books such as Windows 7 Secrets, Windows Phone Secrets, and now online, the Windows 8 book. Dot com. Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> Hi, Paul Therott. Hello, sir. Also here, uh, I want to say hello to Mary Jo Foley. She writes about Microsoft for ZDNet. It is the definitive Microsoft column all about Microsoft.com. Hello, Mary Jo. Hello, Leo. I uh, thank Ayaz uh, for filling in for me. He enjoyed it so much. He's sick as a dog and not here today. I think I've been getting people sick over <laughs> Skype. <laughs> it's a new feature. Yeah. By the way, we had Paul restart because Paul is working on something that he can now tell us about. So, so was Mary Jo, although she's not using it for the podcast. No. This is a Windows 8 Pro Surface. Yes, it is. And you look, you look marvelous. We had you restart. I don't know uh, when. Uh, maybe I don't know what happened Skype there. Skype might yeah. have been confused, but but uh, looks great. Skype is confused. It's confusing and confused. <laughs> it should work perfectly, flawlessly on Windows 8. You would think so. It is, after all, a Microsoft core product. I have high expectations, but I also have lots of experience that suggests <laughs> I should, shouldn't have high expectations. <laughs> but we, 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 uh, we have determined that Mary Jo now has sufficient bandwidth, I think, but because she's using a Core 2 Duo Windows 7 machine, we've decided to... Uh, we tried to send her a Mac Mini, but she wouldn't hear of it. Yeah. So we're going we're gonna to find a, a <laughs> Dell computer that looks exactly like a Mac Mini and send that to you instead. <laughs> I think you should send her a Mac Mini with Windows on it. What about that Dell thing, huh? I know. Wow. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but I think that's fascinating. Dell uh, Dell looks like they're going to go ahead and make, be able to go private. Mm -hmm. Thanks to their uh, deflated stock value, I guess. They're like the flowers for Algernon of the PC world. <laughs> they're going to get a rejection, <laughs> and briefly, they're going to be brilliant. But watch out. Yeah. It, 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 and in the end, the apes get smart and destroy the earth. Oh, no, that's <laughs> exactly. another one. That's something different. <laughs> so, uh, now, we can't... Can I buy a Surface... Can I go to the store and buy a Surface Pro no, now? No, you can't, Leo. But you no. have one. <laughs> Paul got Actually, one. Actually, before we get to the Surface, uh, yes. maybe we should talk about the meetup we have planned for New York on Friday. Another blogger bash? Mm -hmm. No. First of all, <laughs> what's going on Friday? Uh, so Friday is the the at midnight day. is the launch of the Surface Pro. And is there going to be a big party? Um, well, there's going to be a smallish party. party. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Will Balmer be there? Because Bra Balmer, Balmer brings the fun. Uh, <laughs> the problem is we're about to have a major blizzard on the East Coast uh, starting yep. tomorrow. Which is why it's such a good idea to have the Super Bowl. In East Rutherford, New Jersey next year at this time. I know. Yeah. Exactly. How amazing <laughs> would that be? A good you idea. You thought that blackout was bad? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I think New yeah, Orleans should just getting, get like, it permanently. We're getting two snowpocalypse this week. Really? It's <laughs> going to be a snowpocalypse? Yeah. yeah, it's like two feet of snow. What could possibly go wrong? So, yeah, so we, we were going to have uh, a tweet up and then I'll go to Best Buy at, at midnight to go to the Surface Pro launch. Oh, so now we're Windows still guys thinking about having, having a it. good time. That is awesome. Yeah. Let's all go to Best it. Buy. <laughs> I know. Let's I know. all go to Best Buy. Microsoft really knows how to bring it, Leo. <laughs> yeah. Let's go, let's go to a place you don't want to be in broad daylight. <laughs> let's go to Best Buy. <laughs> no, and we'll do it at midnight. Oh, really? That's, that's the funny. best day. Don't they have a Microsoft store? Mm. Uh, they had a very nice store in Times Square that was a pop-up store that they closed recently. Nice timing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we don't really know why they closed it. We think because the lease was up maybe or something like that. So it wasn't very good timing. And so the launch is at Best Buy at midnight. But if, if this huge snowstorm happens, we're, we're still thinking about doing our tweet up, which is pretty close to the Best Buy. But um, we're you expecting know, a smaller... Being at the Best Buy might not be a bad idea because they'll be a nice place to, um, you know, bunk down for the next three days when the rest of New York doesn't have electricity. <laughs> no apocalypse. Yeah, because Best Buy is you know. known for its uh, incredible resilience to bad weather, I yeah. believe. <laughs> so, so, yeah, anyway, we're having the tweet up um, unless something horrible happens. So any, anybody who heard about our tweet up, it's at this place called the Swift Hibernian Lounge. It's on West, It's on, sorry, East 4th Street, not that far from the Best Buy. So we're still going to be there at 9 p.m. if you want to come out in the blizzard and join us. And to be yeah. clear, by we, she means her. Because <laughs> and um, like, I, <laughs> where are I will you? not be and like going. five craft beer fans will be there. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, Paul is not going to make it. Yeah, so I want to gonna go. Be? Actually, my hmm? where are you going to be? I'm going to be home, uh, protecting my children. Oh, you know, snowpocalypse. <laughs> ah. I, no, I, I, I've gotten some uh, uh, guilt from my mother, who was you know home alone and uh, is worried about, I don't know, banditry or <laughs> you know, being snowed in, whatever. I don't, which, which reminds me, I had completely forgotten, but I have a mother too. Yes. And she lives in Providence, <laughs> just down the road a piece. So oh. while, oh, while you're there, could you stop by and check on mom? I absolutely could do that. <laughs> is Providence going to be part of the snow snow? Yes, yes, it is. Yes, yes it is. Mm. One to two feet. You know, yeah. that's actually mostly when I talk to my mom is uh, during <laughs> natural disasters. Yeah. <laughs> Last my time, mom is a natural disaster, so that's just part of the <laughs> Last time, <laughs> Sandy. Part of the and I called her, and she was sitting in a chair in the middle of the room so that no peripheral uh, objects could fly out and strike her, like in The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Jeez. That, that's Hi, amazing. Hello, honey. I'm sitting in the middle of the room right now. <laughs> With a tape measure <laughs> to make sure I'm as far as possible. No, and I, I, couldn't, I couldn't say that that wasn't the best thing to do, not having uh, living here on the West Coast where we only have earthquakes, so there's no point in preparation. Sure. Um, we don't know ahead of time, as you do, that three feet of snow are headed your way. Well, it's you know how meteorology is. It's like they're always wrong. You know, it, this so, could be a drizzle of rain. Yeah, exactly. It could be the blizzard of '78 all over again. It's kind of hard to say. So when exactly is snow apocalypse scheduled? <laughs> Friday through Saturday. Exactly yeah. the launch. In fact, that would be yeah. if you were going to try to like bracket the launch best as possible. That would be if the you time could put the it. launch window in the exact minute that, that is in the middle of 48 hours of snow. It Just is. enough to keep you locked into the Best Buy and then yep. a sufficient dusting afterwards to make sure you never You should leave. have just enough strength to make it to the Best Buy. <laughs> right. And then not enough never, to leave. Not to, it's really a Stephen King novel. It literally is a Stephen King novel. I yeah. saw they're making a the movie out of the dome. They're making a mini series, actually a series, I should say. With Spielberg. And it's going to be a summer series, and if it's popular enough, they're going to bring it back each summer as a, like a summer replacement series. <laughs> really? They're going to keep it like The Walking Dead. Like, there's like, why does it have to end? It could be like The Walking Dead. Sure. That dome's not going anywhere. Sure. You could throw in snowpocalypses and everything. All right. So you're going to have a party, uh, Best Buy <laughs> in New York. Do, is there a particular Best Buy we should know about? Number uh, 1501 yeah. or something? Or uh, It's the it's the one in Union Square. Union Square um, Best Buy. Best Buy. But. And the tweet up is close by at Swift Hibernian Lounge. So Swift what is, is it Swift 
That SwiftNYC.com, I think, was the Swift SwiftNYCbar.com. Yep. Yeah, I didn't get. It to looks ask like a great you. place. I was very eager to see it and to drink there, and uh, now I will be doing that at home. So you're uh, you're doing. Uh, is this does this have beer on tap? Is that the reason for going to yep. the it Swift is. Hibernian Lounge? Actually, Leo, click on the uh, party info link at the top. Okay, party. There's people. some nice pictures of the place there. Oh, mini okay, look look at the menu. Mini cheeseburgers, mini Cuban sandwiches, <laughs> mini French dip sliders, mini spicy wings, <laughs> mini farmhouse cheese platter. Mini tahini. A lot of mini foods. <laughs> mini skillet sausages <laughs> with house beer. Irish smoked salmon with traditional brown bread. Crudite platter. You could call it a crudite platter, but I wouldn't. <laughs> wow. This, uh, this is a beautiful room. Now, this means, though, that people uh, under uh, 21 are not allowed, or is that not the case? Uh, I, you, I think they can get in, I believe, but Good. they just obviously cannot drink. But many, ch <laughs> many children listen to Windows Weekly. It's a, yes, I know. Yeah. We have we have many seven-year-olds. <laughs> yes. yeah. Our key target audience. <laughs> yeah. So we don't want to leave them out. No, actually, it's true that when I do uh, when I plan meetups, I really have learned, mm -hmm. uh, having them had them in strip clubs for many years, that it's probably better. <laughs> <laughs> to have them somewhere. I think you, I misunderstand the point of this meetup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wasn't meeting fans. <clears throat> no, no, seriously, I've learned that uh, it's good to have these meetups somewhere where uh, people underage can go because there are, yeah. we have many underage fans and we, that's one of the things we really like. That's, that's why we talk about drinking in strip clubs so much on <laughs> this show. Right. <laughs> Speaking of which, Mary Jo, how did the 40 and 30 go? Good. Finished it you on succeeded. time. Did you get a t-shirt? What did you get? Uh, I'm getting a mug at my local bar. With your name at, on it. Uh, with my name on it. You could actually get anything you wanted inscribed on it. Oh. Uh, and people have inscribed some weird things. What is, what is <laughs> going to be written on yours? Mine is going to just have my name and say a loyal local. That's Aww. it. And that nice. hangs above the bar so that when you arrive, yes. they just pull it down? Yep. And say, oh, Mary Jo, we didn't wash it this week. Is that okay? <laughs> No, the wheat beer kills the germs. It's okay. Exactly. <laughs> what was your favorite of the... So for people who are just now discovering Windows Weekly, Mary Jo took the 40 beers in 30 days challenge. Each beer... And I'm now wondering why they've discovered it. <laughs> <I'm> wondering, <laughs> when are they going to talk about Windows? Because we did peripherally, but we haven't yet really gotten into the meat of it. But I don't want to miss this. This is this is the highlight of the show for me. 40 beers in 30 <laughs> not, days. Not just for you. <laughs> but... <laughs> And and uh, and uh, they each is a pint. It's not like a, a sip. Right, right. It, it was actually forty beer styles in thirty days. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So you wouldn't just be like forty buds in forty days. This is no. like all kinds. It was. It is was. Rolling forty Rock buds in, in forty there? minutes? Is is no. No. <laughs> no none of the classics. <laughs> no no PBR in there. Huh? No. Wow. No. Narragansett. <laughs> Narragansett. Didn't make the cut. The champagne yeah. of bottled swill. Uh, so, so no. And did you have a favorite, or I'm, I'm sure you had many favorites. I had many favorites. Yeah. Um, you know what was cool about it was you got to try styles of beer that right. you normally wouldn't try. So right. I got to try things like Doppelbox and triples. Neat. I don't usually drink those kind of heavier, old, right. older, more classic styles. So it was fun to try oh, more. Really neat. Very fun. Well, we'll look for uh, your mug. Yes. <laughs> I won't tell people what bar. Just search every time you go to a bar in New York City. <laughs> Search for Mary Jo's mug over the bar. She's like the the, the Hemingway of tech bloggers. She is. <laughs> you know? She gets in fights. She uh, do. Bar fights, bar brawls. Fights, brawls People it. talk about Mac Minis. Getting me a Mac Mini, I break oh, yeah, some I bottles. Gotta... Yeah. Gets ugly. So um, Surface Pro arrives on Friday, but... Uh, both Paul and Mary Jo have already been playing with it. I presume now that the NDA is up, you can speak of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you've had it for a couple of weeks, so you have a pretty good sense. We can speak of it. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I guess the big question is battery life, right? Isn't that what everybody wants to know? Yep. Yeah, that's not it's, great. It's no, it's what everyone <laughs> thought it was, okay. which is four to five hours. <laughs> well, it's not awful. That's a laptop life, right? Right. right. Yeah, it's but tablet you know, life. I've been using Ultrabooks for a while. I mean, I, my, I have a big 15-inch Ultrabook that gets six and a half to seven hours of battery life. Yeah. Um, when you get used to that kind of battery life, it's it feels like going back in time. Yeah. Having to think about it like this, you know, having to worry about battery life. You're kind of spoiled. Yeah. I haven't tested this yet, I, I, and I know some people probably have, but I'm interested to see whether it supports any form of fast charging where... 
you could plug it in for less than an hour and have it, you know, zoom up some a huge percentage of uh, time again. That would be helpful, obviously, but it's not going to help you on a flight. You know, if you're going cross country across uh, the ocean or whatever, you know, four and a half, five hours. And and I, I guess you know, uh, I it's different on different scenarios too. And and I've not tested it this way, but one thing I've noticed, uh, just sort of anecdotally, is that if you play a movie in like a desktop video player, the battery life is way worse than if you use like the Xbox video app, you know, the Metro app. Well, that's so it's, good in it's, a way. That means you could something you could fine tune, right? Well, something you play. I mean, some, you know, that's a, obviously you have your choice of video apps, but I mean, um, and in some that cases, they could fix that though. I mean, I, I, the only fix for this is going to be a new device. Oh dear. You know, I think. Although, although they they've hinted that there are things they can do with an update to the operating system that might affect the battery life, they've kind of been hinting that. I bet that won't be dramatic. Actually, I should say, you know, they also hinted that there are additional pins on the the what they're now calling the accessory spine connector, the the key, you know, where the keyboard connects, and it's not hard to imagine a slightly thicker keyboard uh, ca a cover that had a battery in it, or something that looked just like the keyboard cover but was just battery that you could kind of carry with you and swap out as needed. Um, so, you know, maybe they'll, maybe they'll do something like that. But I, honestly, I, you know, this device, I think, given the sort of highly portable nature of it, it's, it's kind of tough to picture, um, you know, plugging on additional things, kind of like when you have a smartphone and you get one of those, you know, I don't know what they call them, like a backpack battery that kind of makes the thing much bigger, but finally lets you use the thing all day um you know it's that's a compromise of its own kind yeah, right it makes there. it heavier and thicker and yeah, yeah. we don't really want yeah. that either yeah although they 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 actually did a really good um ask me anything on reddit yesterday i and they saw talked that about, i thought that was cool that they did that it was really good and um they did they talked i'm holding up my surface right now and right right yeah. next to where the magnets are there are these two weird little connectors and that's what they were talking about like and they were and they were pretty much hinting like we've got some things coming that ah. might help you with your battery life on this. So yeah, there are little connection plates in there that don't yeah. exist in the in the RT version. Are they and pogo so they, pins? Are they? Is that what they are? I think that was the term they used. Yeah, yeah. that's what they said. Mm -hmm. yeah. So maybe new kinds of you know keyboard cases, maybe even a dock. Um, you know whatever the, the, the different possibilities. I am I am Panos Panay. though. he did it. Yeah. Mm hmm. <clears throat> That's neat. Uh, I think that that, that uh, is an interesting way to acknowledge uh, the geek crowd. It certainly not does not reach out to uh, CIA. Well, but these are the people who are raising these issues. Exactly. You know, in other words, yeah, yeah, yeah. the battery life issue, the amount of storage space uh, left on each of the systems yeah, but is not the way, an that's, issue. That's been a little controversial, too. But also with only within tech circles, you know, it's the type of thing that normal people won't understand or care about. And well, frankly, but what so. happens is that normal people see a headline or their geek friend says, oh, yeah, I'm a little disappointed by the amount of uh, free space. And mm -hmm. then that sure. becomes canon. And, yeah. it, and it becomes, the, you know, uh, without yeah. explanation, like, yeah, there's low free space on the Surface Pro. I had a reader tell me via email that they went into Best Buy to find out if there were going to be Surface Pro pre-orders. And they were told that Surface Pro had been delayed because it only had 23 gigabytes of usable space, and they had to fix that problem. Oh, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah, it's like, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> That's how this, you know, it's tell, it's a game of telephone. You wonder why they're yep. starting Microsoft stores. So, well, <laughs> let's uh, let's nail it. What is the free space, and uh, what is the story? Well, if I understand that from that chat. Uh, it's about 10 gigabytes more than what was previously reported. So I think the, if I, off the top of my head, I think it was 23 gigs free on the 64 and 83 ish on the 128, something like that. So it's actually, uh, you could find it in there somewhere. There Mine was a. Says Fecal Face, nice name, says, <laughs> this is why I love Reddit, says, sure. why did you allocate the storage space in the way you did? Surely you could have anticipated the bad press you're currently getting for shipping with relatively low free storage pace uh yep. then the many respond let's uh giant panda well ju uh, jump down to the yellow the surf jeez the names are horrendous <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't. Yeah. the Just surface look for guys surface team. Look for surface team. that's it <laughs> yeah. 
Don't look at anything else. Don't look at anything else. All right, I'm just going to backspace because uh, they actually synopsized knowing this would happen uh, right at the top there. We designed Surface there. Pro and the allocation of disk space in our systems to have the power of full Windows 8. Um, all right, so anyway, the bottom line is... What, yeah, I'm, I'm reading. I don't see anything yet about memory. Six to se six seven to gigs. Seven, seven gigs. gigs. Of additional free space over what was previously... Uh, reported plus. So, well, wait again. a minute though. There's 23 okay. gigs available on a 64 gig machine. Right. Is that right? There's yes. 83 gigs available on the 128 gig system. Yep. Well, it's actually That's six right. to seven gigs. More than that. It's so it's 30 on a 64, but it's still less than half. Uh, right. They talked. But, they talked. In, they talked on Reddit about. Um, if some people said, "Why? Do, why do you have the disk recovery image in there? Like, why did? Why didn't you just put that on a flash drive? Like, why did you guys include that?" And they said, yeah. "We were afraid people might lose the flash drive. And if you want to do that, you can do that yourself." That's true. So you could like, eliminate yeah. it and then add another few yeah, so gigs. Let me, let me let me show you. you you've seen this before, Leo. Um, yeah. This is the little That's flash drive that Apple. That Apple. Yeah. And you can understand. By the why way, you, they don't include it anymore. Okay, but th this they is what to. people are asking for. In other words, yeah. why don't you just throw this in the box? Right. You know, if you had something like this, which is teeny. And uh, bootable, by would, the way, which is a good and, thing to have. Yeah. This would save uh, some several gigabytes of space. Well, I don't remember the right. exact Not figure. a huge amount, though. No, but it's a huge amount. Of, when you're talking about 64 gig with only 30 free, I mean, as a percentage, that, that could make a big difference. So it's roughly 34 to 38 gigs of something on that drive. That's uh, Windows well, itself, which is what? How big? Seven, eight? Well, insta yeah, installed. So I'm, I'm not actually, I think I would know that it's off the top of my head. Stuff. I'm not actually positive. It's, it's Windows and a few apps. It's the uh, recovery partition, uh, the recovery image. I, I guess say. here's the more uh, germane question. Um, yeah. Is there enough room on it for you to install? Uh, Office, it comes with Office, right? No, it does not. Oh, it does not. All right. Is it enough room for it to for you to install what you need and still have enough free space to get work done? I presume that one of the reasons they don't care is because SkyDrive, they hope that you'll use SkyDrive for storage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Honestly, I, I think most people who buy a pro device are going to want the 128 gigs. Yeah. 128 gigs, you know, anyone who, anyone who went SSD early knows that 64 gig was the initial right. allotment we got. Not enough. Right. And 128 made it pretty comfortable. And, uh, you know, and, and I can look on mine right now. I just, I think I wrote about this today, but, you know, I have 33 gigabytes free out of 110, it reports. Um, and I've loaded this thing up. I've got my complete SkyDrive allotment syncing to it. I didn't, you know, only sync little parts of it or whatever. It's, it's everything I, I do through SkyDrive. All the apps I use, Photoshop, you know, iTunes, um, Office, whatever, is all on there. And uh, I think that's the comfort point for most people. I think that... The types of people that would be drawn to this device are going to want the 128 version. The other thing to remember is that this thing has uh, micro SD expansion. You can add 64 gigs for whatever the price of a micro SD card is. And ah, uh, easily. That's good to know. All right. Yeah, well, that's and you not can swap bad. that. Of course, you can swap that out. So if you, uh, you have movies or other content, you know, that stuff doesn't have to sit. On the di on the disk, on the internal disk, you can you can plug in USB storage if you want, as well. So. It's not a complete dead end that you know people are making it out to be. That's not bad, actually. I I didn't realize you could put an SD card in there. Yeah. So that's good. Yep. Uh, battery life. We've already addressed that a little bit. Um, yeah, Mary Jo, do you have both of those devices nearby? I do. Let's see the thickness. Here. Yeah, why don't you sh show them the thickness uh, difference? I'd show you mine, but it's plugged into like thirty different yeah. cables. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So let's see. The top here is the Surface Pro. A little higher the with the RT there. A little higher. Yeah. Go up, go up with the IT. Down with the Pro. <laughs> down, up, down, up with the RT. Bottom one left. up. Top one. There you go. Top one is the Pro. So it's, Bottom it's, one it's is... what, 50% thicker? Something like that? It, it actually isn't that much thicker, but it, it's amazing how much thicker it does look. Yeah, it does. And feel. You know? Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. It's only two pounds, but because it's in this smaller size package, it's very dense. Like when you pick it up, you're like, whoa, you know? And yeah. um, that, that to me is the one thing that limits it as an entertainment tablet because like reading on that, it would get really heavy fast in your hand if you actually tried to do that. If you put it on your lap, okay, not, not so much. Yeah. Have you tried it like that though? I, I find that portrait 
orientation. No, I don't like that at all. There's something no, weird. No. It's like too tall and thin kind it of. It is. Way too tall and thin. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, it was funny because I, I was saying to Paul, I also felt like the cover, the type cover is a little more sturdy and a little bit thicker, although they claim it's the same and you can use the, the ones that you already have interchangeably. But I noticed on the Reddit thing, they said they solved some of the um, sound issues with, that were plaguing the uh, Surface RT. So I wonder if that has to do with the cover at all. Hmm. Yeah, she Not asked me that. People were saying they had that had that problem with the uh, sound. Right. Sound you did. You weighed them right on your. You have a, I weighed a scale. them on my beer scale. <laughs> <laughs> I did, and uh, they. It was actually weird because the the brand new type cover weighed in at like an ounce, or uh, I forget exactly how much, but slight, slightly lighter, but it feels thicker. So I don't know. I think they thicker did thicker but tweaking. lighter. Hmm. Tweaking, tweaking to the covers. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, what are the positives? Uh, we that was the positives, Leo. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. What is, say the what is the no, good stuff? It's powerful. It's a PC. I mean, it's uh, it's a Core i five with four gigs of RAM. It's got a ten eighty p display. It's you know, the display have any great is a graphics, potentially but... very high resolution, right? That's one of the things they said with the Pogo pens is that well, as you may notice, yeah, yeah, we are capable of driving larger screens. Yeah, and it does. It does do that. It it certainly can. You know, it has Display Port uh, for video out. Um, I did a presentation with this the other night, and you know, you do like a Display Port to VGA, and if you want to see what Surface looks like at ten twenty four by seven sixty eight, I can assure you, it is not pretty, <laughs> but <laughs> it it does do it. You know, it, it will go all the way back. You know, um, and so it gives you the a possibility, the ability, I should say. To run real desktop applications, you know, Photoshop, iTunes, um, you know, the Windows Live Essentials apps that are now not called Windows Live Essentials, um, SkyDrive application for desktop sync of content, uh, or the full versions of Office, I mean, all that stuff, you know, Chrome and all the, the browser add-ins you may want to do. And it's completely compatible with all of the Windows soft, uh, sorry, the, the hardware devices you would plug into a Windows PC. And so this thing, I've got it going through a USB docking station. I've connected it to every peripheral imaginable, including such things as, you know, the video encoder so I can record screens off of an Xbox 360 and, you know, the, the Skype setup we, that you've sent over here with the uh, M-Audio fast track device and all that stuff. I mean, everything, it just works, you know, as, because it's a PC, you know, no, no surprise. Yeah. <clears throat> so powerful PC, uh, four gigs is a little lightweight, but I guess uh, not, not unusable. It's 64-bit yeah. operating system, so it could have been more, I guess. I know, you know, as a power user, I kind of knee-jerk my way to the highest-end specs imaginable on most right. of the computers right. I have. Always, so my yeah. Ultrabook has 8 gigs of RAM. Right. My desktop computer has 8 gigs of RAM. Um, my desktop is an i7, whatever the fastest processor you could get at the time was last year. You know, this thing, is, it, is, it, compared to those, is a little more toward the middle range. But the truth is, it's still incredibly capable. You can run Hyper-V on this thing. You can run a virtual machine. You can run high-end, you know, CAD software, or 3D software. You can run, like I said, Photoshop. Um, it has that digitizer layer on the screen, which the Surface RT does not have. It comes with that electromagnetic pen. That's pressure sensitive. It has the racer on the other end. One of the things I'm going to be writing about in the future, I'm writing a, a series of articles about the device, is this note. And this is not something I need personally, but... If you've ever used like a Wacom tablet and you know you're, you're writing on the tablet with a pen, but you're looking up at the screen, obviously the Surface supports writing directly on the tablet and you're, you know, what you're writing on is it's like writing on paper. But you can also drive a second screen, turn off the Surface's screen and basically use it as a 10.6 inch high resolution Wacom tablet. Um, that's, that's a potentially very exciting feature, I think, for a certain crowd of people. And so I, there are a lot of kind of high-end uses for it that don't just differentiate it from Surface RT, but differentiate it from other even touch-based kind of hybrid computers just because it has more stuff going on. Um. Oh, another, <laughs> another little funny thing from the Reddit chat. There were, they, like, dropped all these little weird and interesting hints. They, mm -hmm. they told us in the Reddit chat that um, February 12th, which is next week, they're going to have an update 
for the Surface RT that's going to help with Wi-Fi connection issues. Uh, yep. And that there'll be another update coming March 12th also about Wi-Fi issues. So that, that was good news for people with the Surface RT. Um, and they also said uh, more colors are coming on both the touch and the type covers. Ah. So right now, type cover is only black. A lot of people are like, hey, I, I, would, I like it, but I wish I could get that in color too. They didn't say when, but <laughs> more colors for covers oh, are boy. coming. Would that yeah. also apply to uh, RT? Yeah. Because uh, both yeah. covers, both <laughs> kinds of covers, can be used with either device. Oh, they're they're uh, they're they're agnostic. Yeah, because I yeah. didn't like it. I mean, I like the type cover, but I want I want uh, purple or something. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Forty nine or I think they also golden there's red. an update coming for battery life. Uh, I'm sorry, on um, for volume. Dream on, Paul. On, Dream on. 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 <laughs> 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 no, I mean, um, yeah. <laughs> no, I actually mean for Surface RT. I thought they said something about a. Um, an update to potentially make the volume on the Surface IT a little bit better as well. Oh. Yeah, through soft. I did say that. Because mm -hmm. it is kind of a soft device. That's one of those things, for whatever reason, this one yeah, clearly sounds better. It's louder. Yeah. Louder is it louder and, and better or just louder? Just louder and better. Yeah, yes, yes, right. <laughs> no, just louder. The display issue and that Paul wrote about in his review, the um, having to boost the... the uh, resolution up 150 percent for the desktop they they admit there's a fix coming for windows 8 for that um, i cannot they, believe they admitted it. to this they did i really yeah. i was really shocked no i mean i know they did i just i'm just shocked oh. that they did um i don't mean you just lied to us mary <laughs> i can't believe that mary, mary joe come on I've, I've had enough of this <laughs> prevarication <laughs> I, what I mean by that is that uh, obviously this Metro stuff is the future and that a lot of their time and effort is being pushed toward that kind of stuff. And when you deal with external displays on Windows, and this is not a Windows 8 issue, this is something that's been around forever. This happens on Windows 7. Anyone who has used a laptop with a docking solution of any kind and has driven a display that is a different resolution than their laptop knows exactly what I'm talking about. That there's a weirdness to it. And there, the weirdness is kind of multifaceted, but the what she was just describing was the display scaling effect. So when you think yeah. about a 1080p display on a really tiny screen, um, and you compare it to, say, what's going on in the Apple world, because that's, I think, a comparison that will make sense to a lot of people, systems like the iPad or the Metro part of Windows 8 are not completely, but just for all intents and purposes, resolution independent in the sense that they work the, the the software works well at multiple resolutions. It doesn't move all your icons to the side of the screen. Yes, yes. And then the Windows lose them desktop when it resizes. Right. The Windows Actually, desktop. Does that does not, happen you know. on the Mac desktop. I have to say. That's okay. Kind of a problem. Okay. So Windows desktop even worse. Yeah. Um, if you were just going to use this machine by itself, uh, you could bump the scaling of the display up to 150. percent It does not impact impact Metro at all. Uh, the desktop would look better. You'd be able to actually read the icons and, you know, see text and everything. Uh, that works fine. But when you then extend that display to a, a big screen like the one I'm using or uh, actually the way I'm using it is not to extend it but to just use the second screen, which has the same resolution, you know, 1080p, um, all of a sudden the icons are like this big. It looks like a uh, like a Fisher-Price thing. It's like these ludicrous giant icons. I mean, I'm, I have... My vision's not perfect, but I'm not that far gone. You know, like I don't have to have, you know, the text doesn't all have to be 72 type or whatever. Right. So, or 72 uh, point type. Um, there's no happy middle ground on this. I, this is the first weekend I had this device. I mean, I have Tourette's, I think, <laughs> mostly all the time anyway, using a computer. But that weekend was unbelievable. I'm surprised I wasn't committed. Like, I wanted to kill this thing. Oh, no. And um, it just doesn't, it's not, it's not this machine's fault. <laughs> It's just the difference. It's the same exact resolution, but the display size differences are so vast that there is no way to settle on one scaling type that works on both. And Windows is not sophisticated on the desktop part to support different display scaling on each monitor. Right. You know, um, and again, because we're moving forward to Metro, I just sort of figured they're never going to fix this because... This is a problem from the past. You know, um, fewer and fewer people will be having this problem going forward because if Metro gets sophisticated enough, you know, it's just not going to matter. 
but it matters a lot today. <laughs> it's, it's a big. It's well, a it's big something problem. they could easily address in an update, though, right? I mean, it's not, or maybe not. I don't know you easily, but I, yeah. but uh, like Mary Jo said, they are apparently going to do it. So, yeah. really curious to see that. I think they have Actually, to because uh, you know the desktop on on these kind of devices, which are really PCs, really matters mm -hmm. a lot more than say on a Surface RT, right? Um, where the yep. desktop doesn't do a whole lot. So if I you don't have a really great desktop that's very usable for people who want to use it with the external monitors and all, it's going to really limit how many business users are going to want this thing. So they have to fix yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, and when you have uh, different display resolutions on different size screens, too, there, there, there are additional problems that can occur uh, where you could do something really, like I could just unplug the display and then plug it back in. And what will happen is, the display of the system will go down to the device for a second and then it will jump back out to the big screen and it will adjust the resolution as it does it. And then all of those windows that you have open, all of them are going to resize. And the biggest they can be is the resolution of the smaller resolution device. So they will resize to some strange aspect ratio as well because it's that size minus the height of the taskbar. And then they will also all reposition so they're all jammed up in the top left corner of the screen. It's awesome, Leo. This system is <laughs> so well designed. It makes it's you just, wonder if anybody amazing. used it, or they must have known it was going to do that, right? <clears throat> they had to have known. So it's they just been said, a problem for years. They just said, well, you know, this is, yeah, exactly. That's what they said. This has been a problem for years. Yep. What, what do you expect for nothing? Rubber I do biscuits. wonder if they supported different scaling. Uh, for each display, if that would almost solve it, it wouldn't solve all the problems. But I wonder if that would do a lot of it. It, it might. I'm sure that they can f somehow fix that. Somehow. I don't know. The other one is, you know, uh, early reports. You know, people who had seen this thing at CES universally said, amazingly, for a pretty high-end Core i5 processor, that this system was silent. And I can tell you, using it every day, plugged into a dock, this thing is not silent. You, you <laughs> hear the... Uh, oh, yeah, you hear the fans. You hear the fans. Yeah. And when no, you say fans, uh, plural, there's multiple fans. There are two fans. Um, it does have a really elegant and apparently well-designed... Uh, I don't want to call it... I guess it's not really a passive cooling system, but a, um, a venting system that lets the heat ex exit the machine. And it's smart enough not to send it out where you're holding it. So if you're holding it in portrait orientation, it will, it will send it out through the top and bottom. If you're holding it in the horizontal landscape uh, orientation, it will send out the heat through the top and bottom. Hmm. Uh, again, not where your hands would be. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of cool. But, you know, uh, something about what we're doing, you know, me sending video over Skype and I'm not doing anything else with the computer. And the, the fan is running continually while we do the podcast. You know, obviously, if I well, encode that's video, a challenge. I'm not surprised. I mean, that's a fairly challenging application. Yeah, yeah. So it does kick in. Yeah. All right. You know, like it does in an iPad. Yeah, like it does. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, you, well, you're the yeah, one who wanted Clover Trail. You think Clover Trail would fix it? It's still gonna have a fan. Actually, Clover Trail does not have a fan. So okay. Clover Trail would fix that problem, but the okay. problem with Clover Trail is. It only supports up to two gigabytes of RAM. Oh, that sucks. What? It's, I know, it's crazy. What? Wait and a minute, what? 32-bit, it, but it doesn't go up to four. It goes up to two. Oh, well, that doesn't. that's not going to happen. I know, it's nuts. Actually, if you could just have a, a four gigabyte of RAM system on Clovertrail, I, that would be Did you know me. this before? Have you been hi holding out on me? I did know this. What do you mean? <laughs> I've been waiting I, I for Clover know, uh, Trail. I didn't know that. That's that's a that's a deal oh, Clover breaker. Clover Trail's out. It's out now. Oh, Haswell. Right, you, oh, we're might, waiting for Haswell. It. Haswell. Haswell. We're waiting. So, for. Haswell is a little bit of an unknown, but uh, is, uh, speaking roughly, I would say Haswell is probably a, an Ivory Bridge successor, meaning it has none of those limitations like right. Clover Trail has, right. but it has some of the power management attributes of Clover Trail. Hopefully, connect to standby and so forth. I suspect Haswell systems will still have fans. Um, but I also think they're going to be far more efficient than today's Ivory Bridge systems. Let's talk about uh, compatibility. Everything works as expected uh, hardware and software. Uh, it's, uh, it's Windows. Yep. I haven't had. Have you seen anything, Mary Jo, that's no. not, not working? Yeah. That's, uh, okay, that's good. Yep. 
Um, and if you go That's to the, if you start working in the desktop, you feel pretty much like you're using a Windows machine, right? I'm using, you know, the way I've been using it here at home, you know, uh, a lot of the times I can't, I forget that I'm not using the same old computer I was using before. I have it connected to the same, you know, monitor, keyboard, mouse, the webcam, everything. So for a lot of the time, I sort of forget. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, I do have that scaling thing. So for example, though, in OneNote, because OneNote is a Microsoft app and they actually write these things to respect the scaling the font sizes are actually kind of enormous right now, and it's that's driving me a little crazy. <laughs> but, I mean, for the most part, it's a lot like, you know, the regular desktop, yeah, PC experience. It's not really that different. Mm -hmm. I can't touch my screen. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Me. I know. That's, it's funny. When you get used to that, it really, that is actually a, a, a toughie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have you played Call of Duty or any uh, any high uh, uh, requirement video game on it? Yeah, I, I don't have um, the latest Call of Duty games. The, mo the most recent one on the PC. The most recent one I have is that World of War game. And I've tried um, Bulletstorm, which I actually bought on Steam just to test. Uh, it's not... Um, it's not a 2002. I think it came out in 2011, probably. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But Bulletstorm is one of those crazy games. It's kind of like the, um, I almost said Son of Sam, uh, the Serious Sam games, where it kind of oh, throws yeah, yeah. a lot, a lot of I stuff at you. That, that was a. I yeah, forgot about yeah. Serious Sam. Yeah, yeah, Serious Sam was a classic. What a great um, game. So yeah, it runs great. Again, the fan kicks in. I mean, it's yeah. You know, when, when you run a game mm -hmm, like that, frame rates are acceptable and all of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's completely play. It's 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 really it's just fine. It works fine. Cool. Um, what is the video graphics system? Is it is it the Intel system or do they have a something better? Yeah. No, it's just Intel. It's just HD integrated. 4, I think it's HD four thousand. Yeah. All right. We're gonna take a break. Anything else you want to say about uh, Surface Pro before we go? Um. Hmm. Um, think you know, about you know it. What? One cute. <laughs> One cute thing that I, I liked that came with my What's that? trial pack. This is the oh, that's Surface that mouse. Mouse yeah. that's made to go with the Surface Pro. And since I love using the mouse, the I, wedge. I actually it's a wedge like mouse. And you like wedge the wedge mouse. mouse. I do. do. You like this? I and I liked it. I didn't think I was going to like it because I haven't liked most of the new Microsoft mice. Um, right. It's a Bluetooth mouse though, so it it does kind of drain your battery a little. When you have that on. Mary Joe, if we didn't like beer, I don't know that we would have anything in common. I know. <laughs> Uh, I agree. The truth. I asked that. The so the the mouse thing, out. like I, I I my hands are way too big to use this thing. I actually get this gets caught between my fingers because it's so small. But um, the I asked uh, Microsoft, I because I have one of these from before. I said I don't understand what makes this a Surface version of this, and they said it's black. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah. like, the uh, sides are black. Yep, that's the it's difference. Black. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the same color as surface. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> it's black. All right, we come back in a moment, and we'll talk more. Paul Throt, Mary Joe Foley, the latest news from Redmond, Washington. I would like to encourage you all, however, to try our newest sponsor, Podio. Did I talk about Podio? We probably talked about it last week. Podio.com. You know about Podio? Podio is an amazing service, brand new from Citrix. I'm a big fan. It allows you to, well, how can I describe this? This is the hardest thing with Podio. You know, a video would, uh, I've got a video here. We'll speak a thousand words. Let me run that. If I can figure out how to switch to the video. Here we go. This is, it's project management made simple. Here's a, a Podio workspace you can see uh, right here. The idea, frankly, is uh, if you're in business, you've got your, all your stuff in a million different places, email and spreadsheets and documents, lots of places all over the all over the desktop. Uh, the idea is to collate it all into Podio, and it works with everything. Works with SkyDrive, works with Google Docs, works with everything. Uh, you can import all your contacts. Actually, you don't even have to import them. You work with all your contacts. You can manage all your products. It's got a timeline. It's kind of like Twitter, where you can con communicate very quickly and easily with the people on your team you have different workspaces for different projects you completely customizable and that's kind of part of the problem is that until you actually play with it it might be hard to really understand what you could do with it we found lots of ways to use podio here and we think you'd be very interested 
and trying it. So we've set up a free trial. All you have to do is go to Podio.com. I invite you, though, not just to set up, but to set up your first workspace and invite your team so that you can see how it works. Podio.com. There's no offer code, nothing you need to know. Uh, just go there and try it for free and see. And as you use it more and more, uh, then there are uh, premium versions of Podio, but it's freemium. So you can try it absolutely fully for free at Podio.com. If you've been trying to manage a complex project, try to keep a team on track, if you've got um, deliverables, receivables, I don't know, all the bulls, this will handle it for you. For coworkers, clients, and external contacts, it is really cool. See all the file providers, Box and Dropbox and SkyDrive and Google Docs. It's really cool. Podio.com. Please give it a try today. We really like it here at the uh, TwitBrickCast. We've been using it for a lot of projects. We've been very pleased with it. Windows Weekly, Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley. Uh, let's talk about... It says, why... This is a question you pose in the, in the notes, and I think it's a good one. Why Surface RT, then Surface Pro? What was the reasoning behind yeah, that? That was, that was another thing that came out of uh, the Reddit AMA... Uh, and this was really surprising to me in a lot of ways. They, this is what they're saying. They say the reason there was that three-month gap, RT came first, then Pro, was because they created the RT team, the Surface RT team, three months before they created the Surface Pro team. How funny. Yeah. Um, so just, because I just considered it one big team, Surface, yeah. you know. And, uh, they say no. They say there were actually two different teams. The other team didn't get staffed up for three months, and that's why there huh. was a three-month delay. Believe it or not. So I there's no technical. Believe that. You choose. Oh, Paul, you think they're <laughs> Mr. Conspiracy Theory here? You think there's another? Uh... I don't know. I, I I sort of thought this through. Like many people, I think that Microsoft should have done it in the opposite direction. That the Surface Pro, which is the one that's compatible with all of the stuff that people use today, would have made more sense at launch. Right. Not to mention the fact that they were launching Windows 8. Uh, it, I think it was a very confusing thing. I know it was a very confusing thing for people that Microsoft launched Windows 8 and Surface with Windows RT on the same day. You know, people were kind of blown away by that because they look the same, but they're not. It's a right. very important distinction. Right. Uh, also, there was no ecosystem available for Surface RT when it first came out. Uh, there were very few apps. Content, uh, you know, the media content wasn't that great. And these are things that improve over time. You know, uh, Surface RT, I'm not, I'm, I'm not suggesting in the slightest that Surface RT would have been a blockbuster success if they launched it right now. But it would have been less of a risky bet than I think it was in October. You know, I just find it kind of odd the way that they launched those two products. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that when you come out with a device that gets 9, 10 hours of battery life. And then. You know, you, you're like, oh, this sounds pretty good. Yeah. And then go backwards. Yeah. yeah. That's a little challenging, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Let's talk about blue. Yeah, let's talk about blue. It's not just this a Windows is, thing anymore. No, which is, is crazy. It? So, yeah, the the original way we got the leak tip on blue was it was the next version of Windows. Right. It was codenamed blue. Um, and then I've been kind of trolling around for some new tips on blue. And it turns out when I started digging around that one of my sources who's been very accurate on Windows rumors in the past said, well, you, you guys are acting like there's one thing that's blue. There's actually a whole bunch of things that are blue. Like there's a Windows phone blue and there's a Windows server blue. There's going to be like a blue release of Hotmail, um, SkyDrive. So it turns out that blue is more like a wave of things than it is one thing. And Microsoft's goal is to introduce make the all of these are going to be ma major in quotes platform releases and I, I i say in quotes because um what they really are is the one year out update to all of these things so windows blue is the one year after windows 8 successor to windows 8 and it's going to have some new features so it's not just a service pack. not just a service pack that's no, interesting. not just a service because that's pack. kind of what we were thinking no yeah. yeah, not going to be that. And uh, Windows Phone Blue. So there's there's going to be a few interim updates for Windows Phone, like the Portico update that's already out now and maybe a couple others. And then there'll be this thing that's Windows Phone Blue that'll, that'll line up somewhat time-wise with Windows Blue. 
uh, may not be exactly on on the same time frame, but it's it's meant to be like part of this rolling wave of platform updates that are going to be coming more frequently from Microsoft across all of its products and services. So it's a, it's a way bigger deal. Blue is a way bigger deal than we thought it was. It's good, um, I guess. It is. And it, so um, this is going to be the new thing, right? Every year, something new. Yeah, so supposedly every year. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we, we're just kind of like dismissing this as, oh, yeah, every year they're going to come out with a new release of Windows. And, you know, for Microsoft, this is huge because the way yeah. the whole Windows organization is set up inside Microsoft is to come out with something every three years. That That's how their t design process is structured. That's how their tools are structured. Um, that's how the team was structured. And now they're going to start trying to do this every year. So it means very, very deep-seated changes to everything from like how the team is structured to how they actually deliver a product. Like, is this going to come out through Windows Update? And if it does, how are they going to charge for it if they do charge for it? So there are a whole bunch of like rolling implications that this idea of moving from a every three year to an every one year um, process entails. So it's, it's really a big deal. Actually. How do you think consumers are going to react? They seem to like it on the Mac side. But it does change the way you do Windows because uh, up to now, Windows upgrades have always been a new computer. Right. You, know, you, you don't have to change things too much. I mean, uh, between Windows 95 and Windows 98, they did a bunch of, you know, OSR updates or whatever. And the way those things were delivered was w with new PCs because that's how most people acquired, acquire, right, right. still acquire Windows. Right. Um, you could just add on to that model and allow people with existing computers to buy it very cheaply or get it for free, you know, through Windows Update or through the Windows Store, however they want to do it. And I think that's a good model. I mean, I, 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 I this is not, it is a huge change for Windows, you know, for the team and for Microsoft. But honestly, I, I, I think this is something that users can slip into very naturally. Okay. Users are going to yeah. love it. I think uh, so. The question... Yeah. The question is how, how are enterprise users going to like it, though? Yeah, right? that's different. So real yeah. so users like us are excited because there's something new. We, we'll install it just because it's new. Sure. Enterprise, yeah. it's the exact opposite, isn't it? Yeah, it is pretty much. So I'm sure there's going to be like a blocking mechanism for this. There has to be. <laughs> yep. There has to be, right? Like there is for IE. Like if you don't want the latest version of IE, there, Microsoft has this toolkit you can use to block the, the, it from being automatically installed to all of your users. Right. Um, at some point, you have to take the upgrade, but you, you have some time to do your testing and, and decide how you want it deployed. And I think they're going to have to do something like that for business users, too, with, with the Windows update. Uh, yeah, no, that makes sense. I, I, I suppose the, the good news, such as it is, is that by the time this thing arrives, not that many businesses will have rolled out Windows 8. Um, I, I, but yeah, I mean, no, the way Microsoft has done things in the past... Uh, knowing them, <laughs> by the time there's a Windows 8, you know, window, our businesses will have this choice of the two or three different Windows 8 revisions, and they, they're free to roll out whichever one of those they want, and I'm, I'm sure they will do that. Hmm. Right here. All right. And uh, uh, when you say new products, we're, are we talking new hardware products? New, new, what are we talking when you say new products? I mean, you've got phone, you've got tablets what else could that could there be out there um as far as what what's going well gonna you get said blue? that blue might represent yeah. new stuff too right yeah yeah like uh so also services too right so services i get it so it's not like just hotmail okay yep hotmail okay. uh maybe outlook.com skydrive right. all these things are going to be refreshed more frequently the as well of because windows live yep yeah. oh no 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, i got you almost got you on that one no. the return of next generation windows services the return yeah, the of hailstorm and <laughs> xp yeah, reloaded <laughs> <laughs> yep. so when yeah, yeah okay so new is like new services new online yeah. features things yeah. like and that. also windows server too which is interesting um because basically we now know there's no there's no more service packs really coming for Windows, um, Windows Server. Th that, uh, that whole model is gone now for those things. So okay. uh, in its place, you're going to get these feature packs. And Windows Server is going to get this too, supposedly, probably around the same time that Windows Client gets it. Um, and they'll have some updates, I would think, that would make servers um, better citizens in the cloud and probably take some things that come out first in Windows Azure and put them back into Windows Server. 
So that's also going to be a blue release, although probably not exactly the same blue as the Windows well, client. Well, this kind of muddies the meaning of blue. What is What the hell yeah. is blue? Blue just means a, version next, right? So <laughs> of anything. Yeah. Of whatever we got. Yeah. Just the next version. Yeah. Too bad that name next is taken. It's blue <laughs> like a wave. <laughs> Blue like a lagoon. Yeah. Oh, Among somebody's asking. Other, go ahead. Go ahead. Will blue get the Outlook calendar? Huh. Where is yeah. that Outlook calendar thing? Wait a minute. There's no <laughs> calendar. Every time Outlook? I ask, they have no comment on this. I know. I know. We don't know. Uh, I sort of. I don't remember when they came out with this exactly. It was sometime last summer, and I, I, I remember being a little accepting of this notion that, uh, you know, most people use the calendar on the phone. We'll get to that. We just wanted to get the other stuff out quickly. Yeah. Okay. It's like it's like February now. <laughs> you know, like how, how hard could it be to update the calendar? You know, on the web, it's really strange. It's like that old Windows Live experience still. I wonder. I wonder if it has to do with the whole Google um, CalDAV thing. Oh God, I hope so. Do you think it might have something to do with that? Like Microsoft, I, you, uh, you know, incorporating CalDAV into Windows Phone, but not into Windows and what the implications are there. I, I don't know. I mean, it seems to me it's just a visual thing. Yeah, it's more a metro but, style thing. Right? Yeah, so I, I, don't, I don't know. But yeah, this is the one thing that they are not interested in, in discussing this topic. So they're um, actually rebranding it Xbox Calendar and it's going to be at... <laughs> <laughs> yes. With uh, Xbox it. 720. Right. <laughs> when you actually successfully have 10 meetings in a row, you get an achievement. Achievements. That's what, that's what Outlook needs. I need I need scheduling <laughs> achievements. You are prestige level eleven <laughs> on appointments. God, you are a busy guy. <laughs> Achievement unlocked. The gamification of everything. Uh, also, maybe mini mini me mini tablets. <laughs> we know we know that uh, Apple's had some real success with the uh, iPad Mini. Uh, we also see coming from the other end bigger and bigger phones. Is uh, is uh, I see uh, perhaps a rumor that uh, small uh, smaller screen sizes are not out of the question. You know, and this is one of those things you kind of had to read between the lines because I was talking with uh, Tammy Reller, who's the chief financial officer on, on Windows Client, recently, and up until this point, when you asked Microsoft, "Are you going to do a mini Surface, or are you going to have any OEMs do smaller size tablets, or not?" And, and it was always kind of like, you know, tablets are PCs. And we think, you know, the 10-inch screen, that's like kind of as small as you want to go. You don't really want to get smaller because then you're no longer a full consumption and creation device. It's so funny because that's I, what Steve Jobs said for so long. Yes. <laughs> but when I, when I asked Tammy Reller this last week when I saw her, um, she didn't say, yeah, we're going to have a mini Surface or, yeah, we're going to let the OEMs do this. But she said... You know that screen size is pretty interesting, and we're watching uh -huh. to see what consumers think. And I'm like, oh, so that's a whole different answer now, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So maybe, maybe, maybe uh -huh. there's a mini Surface in the wings, or maybe there's well, well there's already a rumor of, of an HTC um, tablet. I think a seven-inch tablet. There's already that rumor out there. Um, I think we're so also getting to the point though where. You know, Windows Phone and Windows need to kind of combine. You know, it, it's silly to me that there is an artificial distinction between these things. Um, and, and this should be, you know, Windows Phone apps by and large, and I'm talking about the built-in apps for the most part, are, you know, portrait-oriented, which is not true of Windows 8 apps. But, you know, I, it's, it's not that hard to imagine... Wanting to run a Windows 8, oh, I'm sorry, Windows Phone style app, snap to the side of the screen on a big device or big PC, and have another app running on the rest of the screen. And that a lot of these kind of uh, silly and hopefully temporarily, uh, temporary uh, differences between the systems could be overcome. You know, that the mail app in Windows 8 is pretty lousy, but the mail app in Windows Phone app, uh, Windows Phone 8 is actually pretty good. Um, why? Why isn't that just the same app, you know, just just tailored for that resolution or device type or whatever? And that this whole thing about mini tablets or phablets, which are kind of like giant phones, that distinction could just go away. That, you know, you could have windows that would run across 
all of these device types and sizes and screen orientations, and that the only real difference between a phone and a non-phone is that the phone has an app in it that lets you take, make a phone call. You know, it's, it's, it's getting to the point where this stuff is, it seems to me, is getting sort of arbitrary. You might not even need it. And we've talked about this a little bit uh, in terms of the iPad Mini, which I think would make a great phone because I don't want to carry both a Mini and a phone. And we've talked about, what, well, you do even need a cell carrier anymore because you've got Skype, yeah. you've got connectivity. Uh, sure. Why not? You know, anything can be a phone now. Yeah, I, w there's, right. There's no reason a Windows 8 tablet couldn't have a phone out. You don't even need a carrier. No, but even, but you could. Well, you could. I mean, nothing wrong with that either. Yeah, but it's it, it's kind of a threat, I think, to the carriers. And and if the carriers don't play ball, um, remember. Yeah, and a Windows uh, like a Surface Pro phone with like a fan going and four and a half hours of battery life. <laughs> what? I what? Oh, that is the Cadillac of cars. <laughs> there you go. Now we're talking. Hold on, I'm getting a phone call. And you have to like <laughs> hold that giant Surface thing next to your head. Now that's silly. <laughs> it just burns your air off because well, it's running we'll so get, We'll all get used to that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, again, the, uh, this kind of comes full circle with Blue, right? Because part of the rumor yeah. about Blue is they're actually going to um, make some changes down even like at the kernel level and at the driver level. And if those same changes are both done to phone and to Windows itself, then you're right. kind of blurring the boundary between the two even more, right? So... Maybe, maybe yeah. we're going to see something like that. Hmm. I think I just think it, it, it seems almost natural that they would evolve in that direction. You know, now that Windows Phone is Windows, Windows Phone 8 is Windows 8. Yeah. For some reason, they have different apps. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> the there are Windows phones with really high resolutions, and there's no reason they couldn't be higher. There's no reason it couldn't be 1366 by 768. You know, it's not hard to imagine. So, you know, maybe Windows 9. Mm -hmm. Someday. Yeah, which still exists, by the way. That's That That was a question a lot of people Wait were asking. I if, thought we weren't going to be doing versions anymore. Right. No, no we're like, not doing what, service so, packs, Leo. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> they're not service packs. So, you know, the question was, well, will Microsoft just start doing colors now? Like, okay, they'll be blue, blue then red, they'll be green. like burnt sienna. Burnt fusion. sienna. Right. Like, are we just going to get away from numbers? But then um, recently, one of my one of my um, sources found for me a, a job post. Well, he found two things. Job posting mentioning Windows 9. And he also found a guy's LinkedIn profile saying, hey, I'm I'm on the Windows 9 team Whoa. in India. And I'm working on it. Yay. So Windows <laughs> 9 still exists. That's, at least that's what they told me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's actually Skype for DOS. <laughs> hey, I'm on the Windows 9 team. Uh, we're going to take a break and come back now that I've made a uh, my my uh, requisite uh, racist uh, accent um, quota <laughs> achievement, which is <laughs> prestige level. Uh, we're going to come back. To, I want to talk about this Dell thing. Yep. Uh, and um, I got to ask you about the new Scroogle. <laughs> kind of leaked out because I guess you probably were all embargoed. A lot of people were embargoed, but uh, somebody found I out about it and. Yeah, I actually hadn't heard of it in advance, but well, take a look at it. I am a fan of the Scroogle stuff. You love the Scroogle. There's a new Scroogle in town. <laughs> but first, let's talk about how you share files. Now, there are a lot of different ways to share files with clients and colleagues, and uh, I've tried them all. We, we use a number of them. But uh, there's one I really like. It's called Share File. Sending email attachments. Yeah, maybe uh, convenient for you, but they're, they're often too big for the mailboxes they're going to, so they bounce back. That's a waste of time and energy. And not only that, it's a security issue. Putting your files into online boxes for others to access. I'm not going to name names, but you kind of, you know, there's this little thing. Well, how much control do I have? How secure is this? That's why ShareFile from Citrix was created. A better solution for business to share files compliant with the regulations in many cases. For instance, if you're a medical professional, it's HIPAA compliant. Accountants, lawyers, and other business professionals all using ShareFile is tax time. How do you want your account to share your tax return with you? By email? I think not. Via mega upload? <laughs> I think not. Uh, ShareFile. It's easy for anyone to use. It allows you to send files of almost any size completely securely. You track the progress of your files. You control them, too. And I use this all the time when I send... Uh, 
stuff to the various radio stations, you know, voice tracks and stuff. These are big files. I don't want to send them um, uh, by email attachments. With ShareFile, you can use the Outlook plugin, and it looks just like you're sending email. You're not. But you can also, here's my ShareFile uh, window, uh, do it like this. So let's say, okay, here's, uh, here's an ad I need to mail to a radio station. Now, I could press send in the web browser. By the way, these ads are in the share file box because I'm using the share file extension that automatically syncs them. Um, I'll just launch the desktop sync widget here, and you'll see how it works. Um, share file sync automatically syncing these two folders, all right? So every time I drag something to the folder, it's automatically available on share file. I could send it as an email here, or, and this is how I like to do it, give me a link that I can send via IM or uh, in my email software. Uh, and these are the parameters that are kind of email me when the item's been downloaded, require recipients to enter name and email before downloading. You could say when the ac access expires. You could say after a day, that's it, or forever, or anything in between. You have as many downloads as you want. Now when I send the file, I'm going to get a link. This is a, a secure link, HTTPS. Watch, I'll just paste it in my browser and show you what they get. So this is what your client's going to get. It. They, by the way, notice it's branded, your logo. You get the file, a download button, that's it. They don't have to log in. They don't have to do anything. They don't have to have an account with ShareFile. This is sweet. And by the way, if you uh, use ShareFile, you also get the benefit of uh, online cloud accessibility to all your ShareFiles, which means sometimes people you know, say, oh, I didn't get the you know, email. What did you send me? And I can do it from my phone or from my uh, tablet as well. I could see all the files. I could say, send that file. Very handy. Notifications are automatically sent via email when the files are open. You control who has access. You can even assign and edit files for streamlined collaboration. So this is a great service. I want you to try it free, a special ShareFile free offer for you. Sign up today. No credit card required. you got nothing to lose. That's nice. I like it when they do that. Just go to ShareFile.com. Click the microphone. Enter Windows. You don't need a credit card. Just the offer code. Windows at sharefile.com. Please do me a favor, try it. I think you'll like it. Sharefile.com. We're talking about Windows, Paul Therott, Mary Joe Foley on Windows Weekly. Uh, what about this Dell thing? I like it. Michael Dell is buying Dell back from the stockholders, the shareholders, with a little help, including Microsoft, putting what, $2 billion little, in? Little, little help. Little help for my friends. He's got good friends. Um. What do you think? What What is their plan? And what is Microsoft's stake in this? What do they get out of this? Yeah, you know, the, to me, the most interesting part was the, the change in what the original rumor about what Microsoft was going to do versus what they actually ended up doing. Because yeah. earlier when this news started leaking out a couple weeks ago, the, the, the rumor was Microsoft was going to invest in Dell and like actually own a stake in Dell. When the actual announcement came out, it was Microsoft is loaning Dell two billion dollars. Michael Dell. and they don't, right? They, but they don't have a they don't have a seat on the Dell board, um, which a lot of people were wondering if that was going to happen. And it's not even clear it, what what they're getting out of this beyond the interest on the on the loan, obviously. But are they actually having any influence on policies in Dell, where Dell's going, product strategy, any of that? We don't really have a sense and Microsoft's statement on this was like two lines like we we loan Dell two billion dollars to help them go private you know what um, it makes sense they want to keep one of their primary if not the primary oh yeah well I guess HP's bigger Lenovo might be a little bigger but they want to keep that strong solvent they're not going to lose any money on this it's probably smart of them not to have a stake in Dell not to have a seat on the board that might be a conflict of interest with the other OEMs they just want to they want to prop up Dell they like this idea doesn't that is that not sufficient? I think it is. Yeah, I mean they're yeah. not losing money; they're going to get yeah. paid back. Yep. I think you. I think what if I'm friends Michael help Dell, each other, Leo? Yeah, friends help. <laughs> if I'm Michael you know? Dell, I say to them, "Look, um, this can't continue. We're, something's going to happen. Something's got to give here. I cannot do what I need to do building innovative machines if I have to report every quarter." to uh, the stakeholders and uh, and 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 you know I'm gonna have to I they're tying my hands help me out here and I will make you stuff as good as surface I will I will be great doing great stuff why wouldn't Microsoft do that yeah yeah I, 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 Dell's in a, sorry go ahead. 
Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, there, you know, I, it's, there's also a lot of speculation. Is Microsoft doing this to try to uh, persuade them not to do anything like do Chromebooks like HP, right? right? Or go Android with anything? Uh, yeah. Again, I, I don't know if there's any real. There could be. There could be covenants in this agreement, right? There could be. There could be. They did that to like Apple, right? Gentlemen's agreement, you know. They, they, <laughs> they did, yeah. but Apple was a hundred million, not two billion. But yeah, yeah, I, I uh, like it. And I think Michael Dell. Frankly, I have a lot of respect for Michael Dell. I think he's a smart guy. Yeah. And, and Silver Lake is another partner in this. They obviously <laughs> Dell doesn't have what was it twenty three billion to spend on this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other, yeah. what, what, what if the uh, other Dell class, almost had that much. Actually, he has a lot of money. He's, he's doing all right. What if he? What yeah. if? Um, what if there were some something going on behind the scenes? What if Google had been like trying to buy them, or oh, or Apple had been trying to buy them? Both of whom have <laughs> sure. enough cash. Yeah. Uh, and to, and you know maybe Microsoft said no, we cannot afford to lose a major OEM. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's all sorts of. Reasons. I never heard about any other company wanting them, but certainly their stock price has fallen far enough that they become an attractive takeover target. Right. Um, you know, this stock had fallen to the I think it was the ten dollar range. And the buyout price here is somewhere in the thirteen dollar range. So obviously they've fallen, you know, they've fallen pretty far. Yeah. You know the the other interesting thing about the new Dell, like the Dell that's going private, is they're already starting to transition away from being um, a PC OEM, right? Like they're more right now. That's still the lion's share of their business, but yeah. They're buying up services companies. They're trying to get into more like the enterprise services business, consulting when they bought Perot Systems. Um, and the question is, you know, what's Microsoft's interest in that kind of a Dell? Like you can see why they want to prop up somebody who's a Windows OEM or a Windows Phone OEM. But like why are they propping up somebody who is kind of getting away or trying to get away from being a strict PC OEM? And what's their interest there? That's, that's another question we don't really know any answers to. Well, but maybe that's the point. Maybe this keeps them uh, going down that road a little bit more mm -hmm. than maybe they would have otherwise. Maybe, True. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Dell has uh, tried smartphones, has tried tablets, has not, not done a good job at either one of those things. And maybe there'll be a commitment now to go after Microsoft's platforms. And Dell never did a Windows phone. Or, yeah, they did. But the streak they was... They did yep. do one, yeah. The, the, no, it venue was the Pro. Uh, Venue Pro. Yeah. Right. It was a nice little phone, too. It was the only, yeah. uh, no, not the only. It was one of the only, one of the only two in the United States, anyway, that had a, a, a physical keyboard. Yeah. Hmm. And, and the streak was Android, wasn't it? Yeah, the tablet, yeah. Yep. So, I mean. So, I'm guessing you won't see a lot of Android tablets coming out of Dell in the future. But. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. Even if there's nothing written, there has to be a little understanding between Michael and. Yeah, Michael. I would think so. Like, hmm. Um, all right, let's get scroogled. <laughs> Fire away, Paul. Microsoft. So the first scroogle was kind of, come on. They kind were complaining. Awesome? <laughs> you mean you was liked funny. it. I mean, it was like <laughs> they're saying, hey, you know, that Google <laughs> shopper used to be yeah. a, a, in the search index of shopping. Now it's all paid ads. Ooh. But this one now but, is going but, after. A, <laughs> but I think nobody I uses think that it. Is a Perfect. It doesn't. That's not the point. Okay. It's a. It's a. That site is a lie. You know, when you go to Google Shop or whatever it was called, I mean, you, it, obviously any user of that site would have a certain assumption about what they were going to get there. Um, Gmail is a little stickier because uh, Gmail has hundreds of millions of users. Like it's a really popular service, and um, anyone who uses Gmail and is being honest about it will tell you that. It is an awesome email service, but it's a little weird, some of the ads you see there. I mean, uh, and they, you know, they scan, obviously, the not they meaning people, but they meaning Google, the giant industrial military complex that is Google, <laughs> whatever, is scanning your emails and uh, generating ads based on what's in the emails. And that's, it's a little weird. It is a little weird. So, you know, Gmail Man was a, kind of a humorous approach at tackling this issue, and now they're, they're, pushing a second attempt through the Scroogled campaign, where they actually have a petition now where you can petition Google to stop doing what they do. Which I think is... Can I just point out... Yes, please do. 
how awesome this is? No, because... it's not awesome. Okay, now admittedly, <laughs> Gmail is the only service that yep. gives you targeted ads based on the content of your email. Yep. But but Microsoft implies that in some way they're not reading your email, but they are. That otherwise they wouldn't have a spam filter. Yep. So they're they... reading your email too. They're just not targeting okay. ads. So right. what is it? Is it that, that it's bad to Here's have targeted ads? I feel like we have this conversation every we time. We have it so. every time. So <laughs> they're both <laughs> reading my email, though. That's the Microsoft point. Microsoft reads your emails to help you. Gmail reads your emails to help Gmail. So don't use Gmail right. if you don't like it. Well, I think that's the point of the campaign. I mean, I you know, this is like the, the privacy stuff that you see on Facebook where I think the point of it, and I think the reason this is semi-valuable, even if you ultimately don't leave Gmail because of it, is because it raises this issue that Google wants to sweep under the rug and that most people don't understand is, in fact, an issue. Some people won't care. They'll listen to the, the story. They'll, they'll come to the understanding that this is occurring, and they'll say, you know what? I like Gmail. I don't care. And that's fine. You know, that's, that's a decision you can make. But I, I think it's just important to raise the issue. You know, Gmail um, or Outlook.com rather obviously has ads as well. Um, they have to generate those ads somehow. Uh, I think I had read somewhere it said that they are partially generated based on some information that you provide when you yeah. Well, they know your age. The they know your birthday. Yeah, so they, they know some things about you. So they know um, so plenty about you. I mean, I think that what what they're trying to do is act as if when when a company is reading your email. Mm -hmm. They're reading your email. Like yeah, there's a no, person it's, it's, reading your right. email. There's not yeah, yeah. a person. Some guy in a room. There's nobody. <laughs> it's like the it's like the mail is going through the server. Uh, you know, you don't like it. You can encrypt your mail. It's going through the server. They see some words and they give you a targeted ad. It, you know what the real flaw is? If the targeting mm -hmm. worked. The problem is the targeting sucks. <laughs> well, if my yeah. ads were all germane and relevant and interesting, then I'd say, hey, you know, this is a pretty good deal. Right. So, for example, obviously a lot of the email I get is about Windows. So one would imagine that a lot of the ads I would see in Gmail have to do with new windows for my home, you know, replacing windows in my car. And that kind of thing is ultimately really unsophisticated. Right. It's just bad. Um, That's that the, betrays a different so problem. So the petition should say, let this targeting work. <laughs> sure. The petition well, is uh, bogus. Microsoft doesn't I, I, care about. In fact, Microsoft doesn't want Google to change their policy. <laughs> right. Leo, I disagree with that. No, Microsoft <laughs> wants everybody to go use Outlook. No, uh, uh, obviously. So, obviously. I mean, the so one... what's the petition all about? What? <laughs> what if Google said, "Oh yeah, okay, yeah, good idea. Uh, we'll uh, we'll give you a chance to opt out." I, I just think it's cute that they're doing the right thing. <laughs> I don't know. I no. I, I mean, think obviously, it's fud. I don't know if it's the right. I think it's fud. Really? Well, yeah. okay. I, I I look at this and I think of this as. Good, clean, competitive fun. You know? <laughs> well, I mean, it's I fun. do. I, I do. Yeah, I can, I can say that. I mean, e fun even, is also good, good, clean, competitive fun, really. I mean, Well, for example, I mean, Google and Microsoft are obviously locked in this kind of weird Cold War thing where they neither one of them has openly said, oh, I, I hate that company. We're going to do everything we can to destroy them, you know, for various reasons. So they kind of go at each other in this weird implicit kind of, you know, backdoor way, you know. There's the Google stuff with EAS, which, you know, by the way, it's like that's a, a, a little, user. That's a little scam and skeezy, I think. But, you know, within their right, I suppose. I mean, I you know, I I have Windows 8. I have Windows Phone. I don't like it. I understand why this would upset people. I understand that it will upset some people enough that they will never use Google services again. You know, there's always going to be that kind of fringe crowd that doesn't like that kind of behavior. But I have to sort of, respect is the wrong word, but... um allow this i mean I, I i sort of have to give them this that this is their certainly their right to do this is no oh, yeah. there's nothing requiring google to support these systems um google, and so it's google, interesting google, yeah it's giving you a, a fairly good free email service it's a really good free email yeah. service it's a really good one uh, yeah but arguably no, outlook.com is as good and sophisticated users know how to turn off ads in gmail you know there are bl browser plugins and well, that's, you know. you know, to me, that's worse because now you're saying, I want to take, it's basically stealing. It's saying, I want, <laughs> I want Gmail for free and I'm going to block the ads. That's stealing. Yeah. Isn't so my it? tip of the week this week is <laughs> how to steal Gmail. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't really nice. care, but, uh, but it's stealing. Interesting. You know, okay. I, I, I'm no, staying mostly silent on this because I agree with Leo on this and I don't really 
love this whole campaign. I, I mean, I think it's totally within Microsoft's right to do this. And, you know, Microsoft and Google are always at war, war of words over everything. That's great. But my, my whole kind of objection to this is I wish Microsoft would take all this money they're spending on this campaign and fix Bing local search. That's <laughs> the, what I would like them to do with that money. <laughs> marketing search, uh, marketing, yeah. what is it, marketingland.com said, wouldn't that be nice if Google, um, uh, Microsoft took this money and uh, in in put CalDAV into their calendar. Well, okay, I mean, yeah. I, I mean that's, there are that's like things. saying, why don't we leave Afghanistan and we get a yeah. free health care for no, everybody? I, I mean, it's not these the things same are not department. That's not how the world works. Right. I mean, yeah. right. you know, but it's fair not. enough. I mean, and they're trying they're trying anything they can at this point to try to get some more market share. They're kind of stuck around thirty percent when you combine the Yahoo, Microsoft search share, and they're not really advancing beyond that. Um, so I, I, you know, they're trying something new. And see, it, okay, just, well, the scare tactic. I just love the have images it. on the page. I do love these people, by the way. <laughs> yeah. They've been screwed. <laughs> you got to think this, these guys are probably, uh, you know, like B level actors that appear in ads and stuff. And, uh, Oh, they this even guy, have a Facebook Scroogled page. Yeah, I mean, but this guy clearly was chosen because he he makes this excellent confused face. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? You know? They put ads Durr. in my Gmail. Yeah, he's like the quintessential like male that mm -hmm. appears in all ads where they're always being outsmarted by their wives and or, you know <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? like yeah, this no, is that's right. Everybody in ads is stupid. Yeah, stupid. Just <laughs> they're stupid people because you yeah. know you know why. Because it makes the great American unwashed masses feel smart, and there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Merv, no, Merv Griffin discovered that. That's Wheel of Fortune. The whole reason Wheel of Fortune is a successful game show. Do you know mm -hmm. why? Because the contestants are incented not to solve the prop puzzle, even if they know it, so that the people at home can go, uh, I know the puzzle, and the guy doesn't TV done. <laughs> they can yell at the TV. Yeah. How do you not know? How could you, you stupid? Are you stupid? What? I'm smart. I know the answer. <laughs> a stitch in time saves nine. Say it! I'd like to buy a vowel, please. <laughs> Q. <laughs> <laughs> I would like a Q. A Q. And then when it's wrong, you say, There's I would no like Q. another Q. <laughs> you idiot! <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't know. We got off on that. Um, Scroogled is, uh, you know... Mm. Excellent. Excellent. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> it's not. Uh, it's not bad. Uh, it, it was when I remember uh, ten years ago when Gmail came yeah. out. That was the big thing. Mike, you know, Google's reading your mail, and people were irate mm -hmm. and stuff. It didn't. It didn't really slow Gmail down. You know, one of the reasons they're doing this is Gmail is now, I think, number one for a web-based mail service. Oh, that could be. Yeah, yeah. that could be. They're all pretty. Uh, I assume they're all the th top three are pretty close. But um, no, yeah, I you just know, saw stats. Might, it's not close anymore. It's not okay. It's no. probably because Outlook.com hasn't fixed that damn calendar thing. <laughs> um, take the money from Scroogled <laughs> right. and invest in Calendar. You Scroogled my calendar. <laughs> you know, it's funny because Google does not respond in any way to this, right? I mean, I haven't seen any response. How do you respond to this? They sometimes do. Sometimes they say uh, it's the pot calling the kettle black, like Microsoft's got an algorithm that reads part of your mail to blah. Right. I mean, it, it, it is true that in anything that provides spam fighting, Yahoo Mail, Outlook Mail, Google has to read your mail. So so I, I think they should make that clear. Well, we all read the, your those mail. Those things are not usually attached to an ad serving engine. No, I but I, they should say, instead of Google reads your mail, they should say, we all read your mail. Google you know, uses it to give you ads. If these things were combined, all of the ads would be for antivirus products. <laughs> and they would be like, seriously, <laughs> we're, you are using the blink tag because you really need this. <laughs> blink, blink. No, seriously, buy it. Just look, we're gonna give it to you. You need it. All right, we're gonna uh, we're gonna take a break and come back with your uh, picks of the week. We don't have time for a listener Q and A. I'm sorry. I apologize. I know, Paul. This is your favorite part of the show. Did you do it last week? We yeah, did. we did. See, I don't feel so bad then. No. Is it that Iaz is more efficient in the show that he like moves you along? What is it that what is it he's doing that I'm not? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I think he's I, he's. I, that's he's, not the right uh, way to look at. He's up. better than me, isn't he? No, he's he's a speed demon. Well, he I is know fast. That. We've talked to him about that before. Yeah, he so, talks like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 then he'll say, "So we've done enough of that, right? Let's move on." Yeah. <laughs> See, I don't do that. I let I I basically let the conversation go till it dies. Uh, you know, and just like we sit uh, here silently. 
And then we're just basically <laughs> hacking at the corpse because we have nothing left to do. Right. So I shouldn't do that. I will. Okay. Here's my promise to you. You had it last week. Next week, we will have we will have enough time. We'll have enough time to listen to the chat room. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have forgotten by next week. <laughs> our show today brought to you by our friends at audible.com. Now, I know Paul loves audible.com. We've not yet gotten Mary Jo on these uh, audiobooks. We will. Fortunately, first, you know, it's, it's a good thing. First, we get her an Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> One thing at a time. Yeah. No, it's it, it, the the uh, it's good that the entire world universe is not using Audible.com. There'd, there'd be no need for Audible ads. So in this respect, Mary Jo, you're doing us a favor. Okay, good to know. <laughs> One of these days, we're going to win you over, and then and Audible will just stop advertising. We got Mary Jo. Time to go we're home. Done. We won. <laughs> Game over, man. <laughs> Audible is a fabulous bookstore. Really, I don't know if there's another one uh, anywhere near this good of audio books, over 100,000 titles. Pretty much every new bestseller that comes out comes out first uh, on Audible. Marissa Meyer? What? That can't be the Marissa Meyer. She's not the author of Scarlet, the Lunar Chronicles book two, is she? It says Marissa Meyer. You're talking about the CEO of Yahoo? Yeah. Or <laughs> Must be another Marissa I just noticed That can't this. be that one. Cider, book one of the Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. They can't not. You think she has a like a, a side job? No, I don't. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> oh, it's just I can't possibly. It's just a coincidence. I mean, I could probably run Yahoo on a weekend, you know, by weekend basis yeah. too, but I, yeah. I no, I don't think so. She's got a baby, a novel, and she's the CEO of Yahoo. Oh, she brings home the bacon, partners. fries it up in the pan, and never ever lets you forget you're a man. Oh, she's Marissa. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's Jeez. completely <clears throat> How about this, American Sniper? This is what you need, Paul. I know you like the military stories. The auto autobiography of the most lethal sniper in American history, Navy SEAL Chris Kyle. How about that? You know, this this guy was just uh, murdered. What? The uh, author, the subject and co-author of this book. No, that's horrible. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God, I didn't know that. I feel terrible now. Well, then you should all listen to this book, and uh, that way uh, his estate will... Get a little bit of money. I'm sorry, that's terrible too. You know, I'm just no, no. It was, it was. He, that's horrible. You know, it's, I didn't know it's that. obviously a tragic story, but he, and we yeah. lost Mary Jo, which is another tragic story. But um, she was he, not murdered. I want to make this very clear. It's yeah, 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 yeah. She was merely skyped. <laughs> she got skyped. She got skyped. That's terrible. Yeah, he was. Uh, he's a guy that uh, has tried to help a lot of people um, in situations like his. And uh, one of those guys, I think they he would take them to shooting ranges and oh, kind of PTSD guys and stuff yeah. like that. Oh, that's yeah. so sad. Yeah, I think sad. one of them shot him, unfortunately. Oh wow. Oh wow. So Mary well, Jo needs to be called back. Yeah, we'll call. We'll, hey, call Mary Jo back. She, you know, oh, she geez. hung up because she doesn't want to hear the ad. That's the problem. <laughs> she doesn't want to be seduced into using Audible. Is going on here? She's going to be audibleized. Oh, man. So here's the deal. If you go to audible.com slash windows, you're going to sign up for that gold account. For a month, it's free. That means you get your first book free. And the real challenge here is with 100,000 wonderful titles, how do you choose your first title? Everything from mysteries and thrillers to sci-fi, science and technology uh, Paul and I love those behind-the-scenes books. Yeah. You know, how, how stuff is... Ooh, Ray Kurzweil's The Singularity is Near. That's a good one to read. What, what do you read? What do you like these days? Do you have a book? So, you know, in the good old days when Microsoft was being sued by the federal government, there were like 30 different new Microsoft books every month. But we haven't really had a new one in a while. And I went through Audible to see what they had. And um, one I think I probably had a, as a pick last year, maybe the year before. I don't remember exactly when it came out. But... Uh, Microsoft co-founder co Paul Allen had written a book uh, called Idea Man, the memoir of the co-founder of Microsoft. Obviously, a lot of that book deals with stuff that doesn't have anything to do with Microsoft. But I, if you're interested in the history of Microsoft, I would say that his bit about that is very, very interesting. But of course, focuses on uh, just the beginning part of the company because he left you know fairly early on. It'd but be, one, it'd be one cool book, if he, uh, if in that book he would say. And then I bought Tech TV and ran it into the ground. <laughs> my, my greatest regret. Um, well, you will be happy to know that once he reached that point of his career, I stopped reading. So <laughs> He stopped you know, reading? 
He, I stopped reading. Oh, you stopped I, reading. I, I, you gave I only cared. Like yeah, I couldn't cares. have cared less yeah. about that stuff. Yeah. So, uh, but the other one I just reread, and it's, it is fascinating. We've talked about it before, is that Ken Oletta book, the uh, World War 3.0. I love and Ken Oletta. There are amazing uh, tidbits in that book. The only problem with it, honestly, is that it ends because when he published the book, uh, Microsoft had lost the case. Right. But there's no information about any of the, um, the appeals. And, of course, Microsoft ultimately um, settled. And so the case was very, very different uh, than it sort of was when the, when the actual trial ended. But there is amazing stuff in there. And the, the two I would just point out is that one is, you know, Microsoft stock price has been mired in the $25, $26 range forever and ever and ever. And um, there was, there's a note in the book that said, on the day that the findings of facts were released in the Microsoft antitrust case, the company's stock price dropped from one hundred and sixteen dollars to ninety dollars. And now it's yeah. what half twenty six. Yeah. Quarter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, not even. Yeah. So, I, well, they've had stock splits and whatnot, but I, what it, but it's just amazing, like how stagnant uh, the stock stuff has been for Microsoft since the trial. So, obviously, the, not, and it's not just stock. There were many other repercussions, but very interesting there. And the other one is they, they've got. People from Microsoft talking about the future at the end of the book, the future as it stood oh, that you know, must in have 2000, been 2001. There's a guy who mentions cloud computing by that name wow. and says that we envision a future where people store their data in this thing we think of as the cloud. And I, and I don't know when that term, you know, sort of started, but this guy said this back in 2000, maybe 2001, uh, which is far, far earlier than I would have thought um, that anyone had considered it in that way. But there's a lot of talk about things that, you know, uh, had different names at the time, next generation Windows services, the beginnings of .NET, you know, back when everything was going to be called Windows.NET, Windows Server.NET, and so forth. But um, that is just such a great book. Um, I, I get, if you were going to get one book or about that time period uh, and, and how amazingly afraid of Microsoft everyone was at the time. Certain amount of uh, irony in that because, of course, Ken Auletta also wrote Googled. Yeah. If he just thought to put an S and C before it. <laughs> yes, he did. Yep. Paul would have loved it yep. even more. I know. No, uh, no Aletta was, uh, was the uh, media writer for um, uh, The New Yorker for a long time. In fact, I remember when he came to Tech TV, he was thinking about writing a story about Tech TV. And well, he factored into the story about down. the Microsoft trial in bigger ways because he was one of the people that the Thomas Penfield Jackson talked to during the trial which you're technically not supposed to do. Right. Um, well, he's the judge, so, you know. Yeah, well, he was you can obviously be, you can be trusted. pretty heavily reprimanded for this. And <laughs> you're a judge. his you entire can... case against Microsoft was essentially right. thrown on the back, you know, this thrown away. Right. Uh, a lot of it was uh, by the Court of Appeals. But anyway, interesting story. Very good. Audio books available now. Get your audio books here. Audible.com slash Windows. <laughs> well worth it. Free for the first month, and I think you're going to love it. And we've got a ton of stuff. I bet there's some beer books in there for you, Mary Jo. How about that? Would you, After <laughs> oh, your 40 definitely. beers in 30 days, you might want to just listen instead of trying to. You know, <laughs> that, could be, that should be the name of your autobiography, 40 and 30, <laughs> the Mary Jo story. <laughs> 40 styles in 30 days. 40 shades of beer. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Uh, let us get to our uh, tips and tools and tricks. What do you got for us, Paul Thera? So uh, I, I've now learned that this has been the case for quite a while. I just didn't know it. But the, if you go into the news app in Windows 8, uh, my site is one of the sources for information in the technology oh, section. Oh, good. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. So um, the reason it's cool is because you can actually then pin that site to your start screen. Mm. And you can have kind of a quick link. It doesn't, well, I should say a quick link to my, all of my articles. So you get this kind of cool news style icon, a tile, and it loads up in the cool looking, you know, news app style. It, it's, so it's really nice looking. If you actually read the individual articles, it just loads the web page inside of the app. But uh, it's kind of a cool way to do it. I just didn't even know it was there because like most people, I don't actually use Windows 8 apps. But <laughs> somebody had tipped me off to it. And then, after I wrote about it, I heard from a bunch of people who said, you know, actually, that's been in there for a while. I wonder um, if it has, it, uh, does it have all about Microsoft.com in it, there? It, well, it has, yeah, ZDNet is in there, absolutely. Oh, good. Yeah. good. Yep. I like it. 
Yeah, that's kind of cool. So I wrote a tip. I, I somehow forgot to paste in the URL here, but, it, but it's on the super on site. site. Yeah, yeah, I have a tip. About that. How meta? Yeah, How to put exactly. This site permanent. Here's another way to read what you're reading right now. <laughs> Wait, what? Do you, and you have a software pick too. I see. Yeah. Should I so, be using this? What is this? This is worth looking at. Uh, yeah. One of the really big limitations of Windows RT and thus Surface with Windows RT is that you can't sync the contents of SkyDrive to the machine. Right. This app, which is only $1.15, apparently is written by an ex-Microsoft employee, allows you to do that. And so it's not free, but it's $1.50. certainly worth giving a, you know, uh, giving a shot. And um, why this isn't built into Windows RT, I'll never know. You gotta wonder if this David Overton maybe wanted it to be, and Microsoft declined, and mm -hmm. so he released it. Yeah, it's called SkyDrive RT Sync, and of course you can. You right, just... I probably should have mentioned that yeah. since I've only been doing this podcast for two hundred years. <laughs> oh, that's my so. Deal. You gotta leave me something, Paul. You gotta leave Sorry. me a little something oh, did, to do. Did you want to? Did you want the title of it, or did yeah. you want me just to talk Here's around? Here's a program it. you might be interested in. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> First day with the new podcast. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. SkyDrive RT Sync. And you would just go to the store, the Metro store, and search for uh, yeah. RT Sync, probably be sufficient. Uh, SkyDrive RT Sync. SkyDrive yes. RT Sync, three words. And Sync is spelled S Y N C, not RT is spelled the pirate way A A A R T T E R T. Mary right. Jo Foley, our enterprise pick of the week. Yes. Um, I don't usually make shows my pick of the week, but this this time I am because Microsoft Tech Ed is a really big show for IT pros who uh, listen to this podcast. It's one of their, it's probably their biggest show of the year. And my, uh, what's interesting about this is Microsoft traditionally has had a Tech Ed US and a Tech Ed Europe, but they were being really cagey up until now about whether there would be a Tech Ed Europe this year. But now we know, as of this week, yes, there will be. Uh, Tech Ed Europe is the 25th through the 28th of June in Madrid, Ooh. which is pretty cool. Yeah. I don't think Wait, they had what? Tech Ed. Madrid. 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 Uh, Tech Paul Ed was hoping US. for Barcelona, obviously. I know. No, it's I been in Barcelona Madrid. before. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tech Ed US New Orleans, June 3rd through 6th. So uh, registration for both of these, I believe, opens next week on February 12th. So all you IT pros who want to go to Spain or New Orleans or both, there you go. I can vouch for New Orleans. It is a barrel yeah. of monkeys. <laughs> but don't. Uh, I, I did learn something. There was a. It was. I should. I wish I'd read this before I went. Uh, there was a great column in the Times Picayune, the uh, New Orleans newspaper. <laughs> I like just. I like That's the that. greatest name of a newspaper ever. <laughs> it really is. The New Orleans Times Picayune. Columnist wrote, welcome to New Orleans. Here's a few things you ought to know. And one of the things is, if somebody walks up to you and says, I can tell you where you got them shoes, keep walking. You can thank me later. Unfortunately, I did not read that before I went to New Orleans. So when a guy did walk up to me and said, I bet I could tell you where you got them shoes, I said, no, I bet you can't. He says, shake on it. $20 says, I can tell you where you got them shoes. I shook on it. He said, you got them on your feet. <laughs> <laughs> I gave him 20 nice. bucks. Then he, he did. And then you said, I got scroogled. <laughs> I got scroogled. <laughs> I should have shouted that. He would have been baffled. Scroogled. <laughs> so just a word of warning. By the way, I'm Good sorry to, to interrupt further, but I just got to show you this, Mary Jo, because while you were doing your first pick there, my phone did something it's never done before, which is it just started buzzing and then it never stopped buzzing. So it, it was sitting there on the table going... It liked my know, joke. <laughs> yeah, right, but look at, look what it says, if you can read this. It says, severe alert. Oh, is that man. weather? Oh. Is this, does it yeah. say snowpocalypse? What, what does yep. it say there? Blizzard warning. Oh, oh dear, it just turned it itself off. But it says, Blizz I saw blizzard, blizzard warning. Blizzard warning till 1 p.m. EST Saturday. Prepare, avoid travel, check media. <laughs> <laughs> and do not, whatever you do... Go to Best we're, Buy. It appears we're, that you were leaving be the house. Out. Are you insane? We're camping out. <laughs> You'll see us you asleep should, in the Best Buy. Why don't you be outside at midnight? <laughs> we'll be out there in the blizzard at midnight. Oh, my God. Bring extra <laughs> socks. Oh, That's dear, all I'm saying. oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> I'm going to wear my uh, Surface Pro as a hat. I, I heard it's waterproof. <laughs> it will keep you warm. Keep your head warm. You bet. <laughs> 
Our enterprise pick of the week was TechEd 2013. Registration, you didn't mention, but I will, opens February 12th. Yes. Uh, your code name pick of the week. Code name pick of the week is Horizon. Um, mm -hmm. This is a code name from a long time ago when uh, Windows Live Mesh was actually going to be something really huge and Ray Ozzy still worked at Microsoft. Oh, yes, the, the Ozzy era. The reason I made it this week's pick of the week is Microsoft is retiring Live Mesh completely next week on February 13th. So if you're still using Live Mesh, your, as your PC sync service, you need to hurry up and uh, get off that service, because once it's retired, Jeez. it's retired. <laughs> yes. And, now you yeah. wouldn't lose any data because your data would be both in the cloud and presumably if you've been meshing on your computer. You're losing data, Leo. Oh. <laughs> you do, right? I, I believe what do you, you lose? lose. Yeah, you kind of do. I mean, if, if, assuming you haven't meshed, synced it to a PC, you could literally lose it. Yeah. Start meshing now. Oh, I see. Yes. That would be stuff. Uh, in the cloud that you hadn't synced? Potentially. Potentially. So Microsoft's solution to this is they say, we, you should just move over to SkyDrive. Well, that uh, seems like Sky they should just convert it to SkyDrive <laughs> automatically for you, mm -hmm. right? But SkyDrive huh. doesn't have everything that Live Mesh has. Which, that's but it has a place for the data. Why don't we, Does. Microsoft, why don't you just move my Mesh data to SkyDrive? You know, you know I, I don't know why you always point out these logical <laughs> things like, <laughs> it, it's like you've never heard of Microsoft. <laughs> you know? I've been outlooked. <laughs> Not the same. Yes. Not the same. I'm in Caldevd. <laughs> I'm enmeshed. I like that. I've been. It's good. I'm enmeshed. And finally, your uh, beer of the week. Beer of the week. Um, I was trying to think what? of something that had blue in the name, so I didn't want to go Blue Moon. Didn't want to go. What the Caps hell? Blue. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. Did you hear that? Yeah, it says that, something. My Android phone just gave me that, a warning, and it talked. Is that the blizzard? Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know what it is? This is this new thing. It's a government thing, and you can turn it oh, off deep it? down in the menus of the Android. Sorry, it says, I thought my UPS was failing. I didn't know what it was. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry no. to interrupt. It's again. a. Sorry. This is. Gov I think this must. I have to look into this, but I think it must have been government mandated that you should be able to get That's, emergency that is crazy. messages. It says you are Extra currently receiving emergency system. alerts. Yeah. Would you like to continue receiving emergency alerts? Yeah. Absolutely. That was hilarious. <laughs> what did it anyway, say? Sorry. <laughs> it say, get out of the house. She was, it was a woman's <laughs> voice. She was saying, warning. There's, you know, I don't know. Wow. I didn't hear it, all of it. but <laughs> Yeah, I, wow. I've seen deep down in the Android settings, you know, okay. uh, government alerts. I'll see if I can find it. I, I presume that when... <laughs> what do you think? Like, you know, it's never snowed in New England. What are we oh going to do? Oh, my God. Here it comes. Get ready. What color is it? What does it look like? How will I know when what it's happening? Is it? What's happening? <laughs> well, I God. think what you need to survive the snow apocalypse is my beer pick of the week. Black and blue, baby. Black and blue. Because I needed something with blue in the name. So I picked black and blue from Dogfish Head, which is a really awesome brewery in Delaware. And this is a Belgian <clears> beer. <throat> but it's got blackberries and blueberries in it. Yumbos. Which is cool. 10%. Um, really delicious, probably only in bottles at this point because it's a little off season right now. But, but um, I've had bottle. this before. It's I've had it and it's delicious. It's um, little it's boy a, blue it, drinking a beer on the bottle. Yep. But what's nice is they made him uh, twenty one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. He's, uh, he's not exactly little boy blue now. He's like uh, right. middle aged little man blue. Oh, little man blue. He's big blue. <laughs> but I like his coat. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. That's so that's that's the beer pick of the week, just to have a blue theme going on. Very cool. Very cool. Mary Jo Foley is at allaboutmicrosoft.com. That's the place to read uh, allaboutmicrosoft.com. And uh, she will also be <laughs> snowed in <laughs> at the, uh, at what the is Best it? Buy. The Hibernian? <laughs> where where first, is it? Yeah, first at Swift Hibernian. If you're in New York and you need a beer to get in from the cold, come 9 p.m. tomorrow night. The Swift, Swift Hibernian. Hibernian Lounge. Uh, mm -hmm. Mary Jo will, uh, you know, you should do a little beer seminar while you're there. We should. Because they have. They have awesome craft beer there. Unbelievable. Beers, yeah. It's uh, Swift nybar.com if you want directions what time does that start 9 p.m and then we're all going to best buy in the blizzard so come on down actually uh now that i he i hear that the new york's blizzard is not going to be as bad as the as the dedham blizzard 
Saying seven <laughs> yes, to twelve yes. inches. Which is how we must now refer to it. <laughs> the Dedham blizzard of twenty. There is a blizzard sent it over Dedham, Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> Under the dome, Paul Therat, thirteen. The blizzard of thirteen. Uh, Paul Therat is at the super site for Windows where you'll see many, many articles over the next few days because he's got nothing else to do. A lot of it will do have to do with battery life since I won't have oh, any power. That's a good point. Uh, you go over to my mom's house and sit in the middle of the room with her. Hmm. Mm, that sounds like fun. <laughs> I don't think there's room for two chairs, actually. Uh, the people in Canada are mocking us, you understand. Three feet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you ought to yeah. come to Saskatoon. My grandmother lives in a town where you can watch icebergs float by yeah. from your front porch. Exactly. Uh, she's not impressed by the weather in, in Boston, that's for sure. <laughs> you know England does. Um, you can listen to this show or watch it live at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time on Thursdays. It's 1900 UTC at our website, twit.tv. Uh, but, but, you know, you can also get it after the fact. We have on-demand audio and video available. Uh, at twit.tv slash www for Windows Weekly. But the best thing to do is to subscribe. Go to the Zoom Marketplace or use uh, Bringcast or one of your favorite clients and subscribe to the show. That way you get it each and every week, audio and video available. Uh, just search for Windows Weekly. Thank you so much, Paul and Mary Jo. Enjoy your, <laughs> your, uh, your whatever it's going to be, your blizzard. I'm sorry I won't be in New York. So you're not going to Snowcopolis. I'm Snow staying home Snow for Snowpocalypse. Snowpocalypse. <laughs> you're not going to Snuffleupagus. I'm going to have a Snowpocalypse staycation, I think is the way it's going to be. <laughs> All right, folks. Thanks. We'll see you next time on Windows Week.